Hi everybody and welcome back to the one Matt not here going through my favorites list on fanfiction.net. For those of you that don't know, what I'm doing is going back through all the stories I have on my favorites list sorted by publication date, starting with the oldest, working my way up, and basically rereading them to see if they deserve to stay on my list. So I've got four stories this week. We'll uh, go with something. We'll just start it off. We'll start with uh, Altered Destiny by Venom Lord. Uh, so, this is basically just your standard AU, you know, fic where a single, like, crossover element gets added to the main story and most of canon proceeds with, like, slight changes because of that element. But but it's just the one element, like most of the other stuff doesn't seem to come in. Uh, this time it's S. Cryed, a uh, series I never actually saw, so I don't really know anything about. <clears throat> and, like, there's some changes that, you know, that happens, that's why you do an AU fic, but it's just mediocre. Not much there. It's, it's fine to read, things happen, but it's just not interesting to me, and so it's gonna fall off my list. Next, we have The Wild Horse Thesis by Calamity Cordite. Uh, so, this one is a, another crossover, but this is a uh, Ranma and Evangelion, where Ranma gets banished by some magic into Evangelion and basically goes through the series. Meanwhile, um, he was banished to a set of videotapes that actually had the episodes, and the rest of the Narima crew watch his actions. So it's a crossover fic and an MST3K fic, I think they're called, or like, I just call them reading fics normally, um, which is basically you have the, ca the characters reacting to the story that's happening, as well as, you know, the story actually happening. Uh, it's a little different than most in that the reactions are bookended to the beginning and end of the chapters only, and there's no dialogue from the outside during the actual chapter, or of what's happening to the crossover person. And uh, I will fully admit some bias here that I like Evangelion a lot, and seeing a happy ending for that really does hit me. Uh, I still think this is, uh, this is very... Um, well written and interesting take on seeing how someone with Rama's personality would handle Evangelion's, you know, everybody's in Evangelion's issues and handle it well. And I just super enjoy this, so definitely fun and it's staying on my list. Alright. Next we have Memorial to a Fallen Hero by Halo 2 Freak 007. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> the name. Oh man, I mean I can't say anything I had. I remember one of my first emails was uh, DW4 player, which is for Dynasty Warriors 4, but damn, like, oh boy. Alright, so basically this fic, it's a short one shot where Naruto dies during the uh, Sasuke retrieval mission, and it's basically the fallout of that, which is very truncated, basically Sasuke gets brought back, but he also dies, and then the council, being like the super people that hate Sasuke, hate Naruto and love Sasuke, decides Sasuke is basically going to get the Medal of Honor and all that stuff and be buried with full honors, and Naruto can just not be buried. Who gives a shit? And then the people of Wave, and then everybody's pissed, and then the people of Wave come, they're like, we want to have him buried here. And they go, and then they see like there's a huge shrine and everything built to Naruto, and everybody in Konoha who liked him is super amazed and then it just jumps like a thousand years to the future where like a descendant of his shows up and is like what's going on and QB was there and it's like I'm gonna protect his tomb and I'll tell you a story about him and that's the end <laughs> it's it's okay like I it, it, you know I just went through the whole story it's not it's, there's nothing super amazing or like even twisty or weird like I've I remember one that was like really funny 
where basically Naruto kills Sasuke, and then it just becomes a loop of like everybody just, oh, Sakura kills Naruto, this guy kills this, this guy, and just becomes a chain, and basically ends up everybody in the world like dying because of this. It's just so funny. But this is not that. And this is just, this is another thing that's like, okay, yeah, if you want to get a hate on for the council and some people in Naruto, sure, that's fine. But it's just mediocre, and this also falls off my list. Alright, last one for this week is Hinata's Darkened Desires by Paladis. Uh, so, you know, Yamanaka over here uses a jutsu on her, on Hinata, to make, to basically let her ignore her inhibitions and all that stuff and throw them aside when she's in the presence of Naruto. And then that she gets a chance to get closer to him when they go on a mission together where they had to pretend to be a couple. And it's just kind of dull. The, the mission itself is just kind of set dressing for the character interaction and just them slow, him, them acting as a married couple without actually being in a relationship and then being like, oh, this is nice. Maybe I should actually do this for real. And the, you know, that goes on for a majority of what's written. Last two chapters or like three chapters where they come back to the village and it's set to continue, but it doesn't, you know, it's not finished, it doesn't stop. Uh, there is a sex scene in this spic, so if you're interested in this, you know, be aware. I just would give it a pass because there's better stuff out there and stuff that's been completed, so it's more interesting and, you know, has a sense of closure. So, yeah, this is just going to fall off my list. And that is it for this video. Uh, if you like this and you want to be notified when I put up another one, please, you know, subscribe. Um, like the video as well if you like it. And um, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys next time.